Okay. So now we said we move on to business process modeling um, as, as a technique area. And um, they're based on what are called workflows. And I've taken an example there, this particular one. You can't read the small print, but that's not important. It says, obtain multiple quotations and selection of contractors. So that would be um, a process. And any of us can, can recognize there, okay, um, the, um, uh, somebody has to make a decision, collect information, pass it on to somebody else, and so forth. And so to come back to, to workflow, it, it's, it's, a, it's a flow chart, if you like, and um, it's intuitively simple to understand. We can look at a picture like that, and that has a huge advantage because we can discuss it with anybody and we can say, I do this first and then you do that, and then when I finish, I, I do that, and then you do this, and so on. And people can see it. So that's a, a rather important point. Maybe it's not conceptually any different from the ways other people would work. Um, but the fact that it's graphical is, is rather important. Now, on these workflows, um, they're presented um, using swim lanes. I mean, like, this has been around for a long time. I remember doing this with uh, Excel charts and drawing little boxes on it. And the idea of a swim lane is that depending where the um, activity is on the swim lane, that tells you who's doing it. So each swim lane is done, for example, by a person or a department or something like that. And um, so if you've got a task and you say, well, he should do it, not me, the way you capture that is by moving the task around um, from, um, uh, from one swim lane to the other. So the, the key issue here compared to a flow chart is that who does it is defined by which swim lane it sits in. An ordinary flow chart just says this is done and then that's done and then something else is done and then there's a decision and we either go right or left and so on. But the key issue here is that you can see pictorially or graphically who's going to do it. It's written very small at the left-hand end of those bars. There's a little a sort of a grey bar, and that's where that information on this particular tool is written. Okay. And then um, another point is that uh, because it's done graphically, you can talk to people and say, well, you know, that didn't work very well. What do we need to change? And in our company, we do this. Uh, my team uh, are all in different parts of Switzerland, and we meet. I'm meeting one of them on Monday, actually, for the first time in a year. And we do nearly all of our work through, through the screen, but we use these... Um, process models and we can talk about what work needs to be done and should I do this and could you do that um, which is completely different from uh, going through a list of requirements for somebody to program and then when it gets into the system having to do a lot of training so it's the the, the, the interface is the clever bit if you like and the next clever bit is that these workflows are driven by a workflow engine. So when you want to do the work, uh, you press the button and the flow starts off. And it sends a message to whoever is supposed to do the first task. And um, there's two ways to get the message. Either they're logged into the system, and these things are available through browsers. So clearly you can be anywhere literally anywhere that you can see a browser and you can see, ah, that task has just come to me. And the other thing that they do is that they send out um, reminders or little links by email. So if you're sitting in an airport and an email comes in with a link, you click on the link and it brings you to this part of the flowchart and it says, you know, did you do this or what's your decision about that? Or, uh, you know, are we authorized to go ahead on such and such? And so the, uh, that's driven by a workflow, but you don't have to compile it or program it. As long as the drawing is correct, the system will then handle all the, the messaging. Uh, you, you do your drawing, you save it, and then you say, right, we've now used this process, and as the process is running, um, it'll, it'll send out a message. And if you do something, and it, for example, the first task in the top flow uh, swim lane, when the person has done that, it automatically sends message to the next person who on this particular one
one is in the next swim lane. But they could be somewhere else. And this is particularly relevant for procurement because it could be a partner company. You don't have to sign them up or log them in or anything like that. You just um, invite them to this, uh, the same as you would invite them to Facebook. And they don't need any particular authorization or they don't have to load up software. And then you can uh, involve them in the process. 